Good morning, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. I know it's been a few weeks since we've been here. Hope you all been having a great summer. My name is Savannah Peterson, and I am delighted to be joined by John Furrier today here at Black Hat, biggest cybersecurity conference of the year. And there are a lot of stories. Cybersecurity's never been a bigger thing. Yeah, I mean, it's great. What's about Black Hat is a technical show. It's mostly CTOs, CISOs who come, who are technical. Obviously, the hackers come, the white hat and black hat. DEF CON crew is Def here. DEF CON crew. I got asked if I was a hacker checking into the hotel. <laughs> I kind of felt cooler than I normally I know, do. It's like, you watch out for your devices. Make sure everything's <laughs> on, you know, uh, totally <laughs> encrypted. No, but this is really part of the Cube and SiliconANGLE's coverage of security. We do RSA. We've done it for four or five years. Um, Amazon reinforcement is more of an industry show slash right. cloud, but it's kind of turning right. more Amazon. But Black Hat is the technical show. RSA is the more of the business marketing show. And there's a variety of other smaller shows, but we're going to be covering all next year as well, just continuing to cover security because the intersection of AI and data and large scale cloud is hitting the scene. And every single company is uh, realizing a lot of pain right now because no matter what people are saying about consolidation, it's still a, a product vendor sprawl. And, you know, there's over 3,700 vendors, 8,000 products, and with the recent CrowdStrike Microsoft debacle, it's there's so many issues in the platform. I don't know what you're it's, about, John. It's, it's a whole nother <laughs> changeover. And I think the next five years and then the next 10 to 20 will be a reset for security. I talk to people inside the industry, it's very clear, Savannah, that they're, the fatigue level of, I won't say technical debt, but sprawl debt, meaning They've gotten so much stuff installed, they don't even know who actually installed it. Patches aren't being updated. There's a huge problem, and that's why the disruption from the CrowdStrike thing wasn't really a security breach. It was just more an example of the problem of the talent, they're gone, people move around, who loaded what system, what software doing. And again, you got 3,700 vendors and 8,000 products, and the threats aren't stopping. So then it's no. not like they can consolidate overnight. They got to continue to buy more stuff. So contrary to public opinion, it isn't consolidating. There's more sprawl going on. So the top story here is platform uh, reset is going to happen and the sprawl will continue and then the threats are just coming on board. I think that's a really interesting point that you bring up, John, with, with these, the diversification of solutions, essentially, across someone's tech stack. And I do think that comes up, you know, we never think about things that are there to protect us until we need them, which is classic. You don't want to <laughs> think about that stuff. It's expensive and it's scary. And I think as with the rise in AI and Gen AI, we've seen it in the data, you know, cybercrime is up just as much as the adoption of that technology. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking at this data from Darktrace right now. Email alone, 17.8 million phishing emails in the last six months, 62% of them bypassing existing domain barriers. So, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. People are just getting peppered right now. So all the solutions on the floor, all the conversations we're gonna be having, it's imperative. And we have more data than ever, and it's all super personal and private. I mean, CISOs I talk to, the, the, you know, what's coming out of this is that they're recommending, look at risk management's one thing, but you got to have a disciplined approach to your portfolio and understand the categories you're protecting. At the same time, bring order to the chaos that's out there. So there's a lot of that, you know, I got to get to the future build. I got to have a stable environment. It's chaotic. And so how do you manage that? It's just, it's actually pretty crazy. And I think I've never seen it this dark. Um, and again, little things will start to emerge. Again, you see the disruption of airlines and just hospitals, just, you know, right. it's the sprawl is, is killer. So that's- And you realize how fragile it is. I mean, how many people, I have, I have friends in the United States Army that were bricked by the CrowdStrike event. Everyone was stuck on their planes. Hospitals were shut down. It, we think that all of this stuff is so resilient as folks living in this world. The reality is there's a couple keys that control a lot of the data and, and a lot of the access. And when that's compromised, spooky. Yeah, and, and the thing about it is you got d more data coming in. Synthetic data is going to be a big part of it. I think one of the things that's a bright spot in the security industry, like it's been with the other industries, is AI is an opportunity. Generative AI could be an opportunity to, you know, at scale, solve those data problems. And you know, we want to thank Cribble, one of our sponsors, that allows us to get here. They have a real, pro the real great solution for them. They're like the data engine for IT security. Um, we got Armis, big, big sponsor here too. Thank shout out to Armis and Cribble. Um, for sponsoring the Cube and allowing us to come here, so to check those guys out. You know, Armis just- Armis is smashing I mean, We just saw that news this the morning. The news hitting 200 million ARR, literally in 18 months. They're on a tear. Doubling their ARR I in mean, 18 months. This is the this is the issue. So currently, Savannah, they got, there's 
there's no vendor consolidation happening, contrary to, pub, uh, to what people are saying. Vendors aren't consolidating because there's too much threats to plug when you got to plug those holes in those opposite those. It is bad interesting, guys. though. That's a good call out because you would see it in other technical spaces, I think. Well, more the, frequently. what's going to happen with Generative AI, the opportunity I see and what we're talking to folks about, and they're, they're thinking about is okay, how do I do end to end workflows? How do I vertically integrate the stack, leverage all the vendors that are out there, and integrate them in and use Gen AI to create a glue layer around either data or interaction? So I think you're going to start to see a real focus on okay, maybe we're not going to consolidate down to a handful of vendors. Maybe the pl one platform won't rule the world on security. I got to deal with multiple vendors, but how do you connect them all? And I think the smart CISOs I talk to are looking right. at end-to-end -end workloads, totally putting agree. Gen AI in there and using Gen AI and designing it, not coding it, not like as a software developer, but really systems engineering around laying out the system for how do I put this new foundation in? Because whoever doesn't have that new foundation like we're seeing in cloud and other enterprises, it's not going to really work out. So I think that's going to be a hallway conversation. We're hearing a little bit of it now. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. And I also think one of the things that's really notable is you know, cybersecurity matters in a lot of different places before. We're not just talking about on-prem or in the cloud, we're talking about edge. One of the top security concerns, according to this data I've got from Darktrace, is that edge infrastructure is, is, is a top compromisable zone, whether that be our cell phones or, I mean, these are edge devices, anything. Most of the things that consumers touch are edge devices. And the reality is there's more data available there and, and a lot of interesting stuff. And it's also easier to hack than ever. As much as we have all these tools, it makes it just as easy for nefarious actors who are doing cyber crime as a service. And you hate to say it's the crazy you, industry even to say and, and you hate to use the word hygiene, but like DevOps hygiene, again, updating stuff, auto updates. Developers and hygiene. You know, and, and <laughs> if you look at what's what's working, we mentioned Armist with their results, even though they're a sponsor, they are doing extremely well, mainly because they got a comprehensive platform with their mm -hmm. Centrix AI. And what they're doing is using real time to get identity of the assets out there. One of the things I heard um, from insiders here in Vegas is that one of the problems with, with all these systems is you don't, you don't, they don't know who updated it when. So you have a lot of sprawl. It's legacy, because you don't need it until you need it. And it's like, it's okay, like this okay. kind of backdoor thing until it's an emergency. And then there's a hole there. So again, you got to rein in the environment. I think these discovery tools, asset discovery, kind of comes in the governance area, but it's really not. It's more of you know prioritization, discovery, discovery, prioritization, discovery, prioritization, and then remediation. That's the focus. And again, discipline approach to the portfolio, risk management is involved, but the reset of the foundation is going to be one of what I think the top conversation is going to be. Absolutely, and I think we're sometimes unaware of what we don't know. I was having an interesting conversation on the plane on the flight in yesterday on the nerd burden from San Francisco with a, with Jane from Red Seal, shout out to my seatmate. And, and Red Seal, uh, everyone thinks they have everything protected. So 75% of CEOs think they have their entire systems taken care of. And yet when Red Seal takes a look at them, just as an example, they find 100% of the time, there's some glaring vulnerability. So the reality is we could all be better. There's there's different doorways in, there's there's different ways to get in with malware and phishing and I mean variety of cybercrime. So I think I think it's really interesting. You know, I think we're we're in an era where kind of in the way that we've been talking about how data is so hot and sexy right now, it's having a moment. I kind of feel like cybersecurity is also in that space where all of a sudden it's more important than ever. Yeah, and the, the AI is going to be a tailwind. we got a great lineup coming on. We've got Cribble coming on as one of our sponsors, but Bruno Kartik has uh, got another startup. He's the founder of Sumo Logic, Cube alumni going back to 2013. Bedrock Security, we're going to have uh, the CISO for Netscope. We're going to have uh, an, a, a keynote from Microsoft talking about threat intelligence and that big North Korean um, hack that they put just recently the DOJ ruled against. Yeah, Zeus is going to come in. We're going to have Ryan Herbert Good from the NYSC and ICE. And we're going to have, tomorrow, we're going to have tons of great Google Cloud CISO, Gigamon, Visa, Darktrace, Sentinel One, um, Cato Networks, and uh, HPE, and so much more. Yeah, so we really do have an exciting lineup. I'm excited to yeah. learn. There's going to be some smart people and some conversations. I'm already learning new terms I didn't know when I sat down this morning. So I'm really thrilled for the show, John. Thanks for having me. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fabulous two days of coverage here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Black Hat. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for cybersecurity news.